Welcome to my desert home in the springtime. Look at all that green. Yeah. Well, click the the notification button after you've subscribed and please give me some comments. I'd like to know whether you like what I I put on or you don't like it and whether you think I'm crazy or just plain stupid okay thank you well I had a I had a sneaking suspicion for a few months now a couple of months two or three that uh, these chickens were laying eggs behind the canvas that I had tacked up on the wall here. And, uh, uh, let me turn this flashlight on. I know there was a chicken that kept coming back there, but there's been a chicken that goes all the way back there. So, let's see if I can Get this open here. There's eight eggs back there. And uh, I was noticing the other day, all day yesterday, there were no eggs over here. Yeah, let me go on and Ow! Getting old. <laughs> there were no eggs over here. All day yesterday. That's where I've been getting most of my eggs from that we eat. Today there's only two. Two eggs. Usually about about four or five eggs there in one day. This time only two. Well I was I was kind of thinking that there was some eggs being laid behind that curtain. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. But uh, they go in there, all the way back there, <laughs> lays the eggs. But if they've been doing that for about three months, that's probably all the eggs are gonna lay back there. And they're, they're probably, uh, <laughs> probably thinking of uh, brooding back there. Well, the thing is, is that every once in a while, an egg gets shoved out from there. I don't know if chickens can tell if the eggs are not viable or not, but uh, I would, I'm not uh, adverse to them brooding and hatching a few. Will you please be quiet? I'm trying to say something over here. Huh? Look at that. You know what's behind there, don't you, buddy? Yeah. I'm sure you roosters are aware. Huh? Okay. Plenty of food right there. Plenty of water. Well... I'll come back out in a couple hours and put the chickens to bed. I just wanted to show y'all what they've been up to. Okay. You remember yesterday? I, uh... I showed you the, uh, eggs behind that curtain. Uh huh. I guess, uh. Oh. And also. Oh, nah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eggs. Well, all right. I don't feel so bad about. About clean, not cleaning out them eight eggs behind the curtain. Because I was thinking, you know, it'd be nice if they just laid those eight eggs back there. I'm going to just, uh. Quit laying them back there because they're going to brood on them. See, because I keep picking up these ones over here. 
and you can see these hens right here aren't too happy with me standing here talking about these eggs. They uh, sometimes attack my hands when I'm picking them up. <laughs> Anyhow, it is it is the day after the. Uh, hey, come on! I'm trying to say something over here. It's the day after the uh, time change, spring ahead, and uh, it's six o'clock. And I'd usually be shutting these guys down for the night, but uh, I'm gonna have to wait till till seven, and uh, probably even later when we get into summertime. Yeah. Okay. Well. At least I got seven eggs over there. I'm going to leave them there. Hopefully there will be 10 to 14 eggs in that corner tomorrow. Okay. Okay. It is kind of drizzling a little bit. It's 44 degrees. And, uh, what are you doing under there? <laughs> 44 degrees and a little rainy. Yesterday it was a nice day. Sunny. Everything like that. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to the cats first and I'm gonna give them a little treat. Not the tortillas. Tortillas for the cats. I'm so for the chickens. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Meow. Yeah. Meow. I know. He, he follows me around and rolls around in the dirt at my feet but won't let me touch him. Anyhow. I'm going to, come on, oh, these, these kids, they, uh, they get in my way, anyhow, that's what I'm giving the cats, two cans of sardines, okay, so, okay, I got a bowl of, uh, bowl of chicken scratch, And some tortillas for the chicken. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'll probably put this food inside. I'll open up their little door, but I doubt if they're gonna come out. Alright, I'm coming. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> sure got a lot of green. I know back in back in uh, Gates Canyon, probably everything's getting really green. Anyhow. I want to put this in there. Uh, and I want to do when I open their door. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can get this. One handed, yep. It's raining, buddy. It's raining. Okay. I'll put their their seed scratch. 
inside and then crumble these tortillas on their floor. Tortilla, I mean both hands. Paper plate getting soft. Oh man. Okay. Come on. All right. There. Let's put that right there. And oh, let's turn the light on. So they'll know it's daytime, huh? There you go. <laughs> well, okay, let me go count the eggs. I should have done that first. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, it's time to pick those eggs up. I gotta go get the, uh, gotta go get the bucket for the eggs. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I know this is a. Uh, this is dark in this corner. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Yeah, at least they're coming through with some eggs. Come on, move it. I'll be back to check on your water. I, uh, I, I seem to have lost a subscriber. I got up to 18 and then I, I did that Bible study last time. Well, the Bible study was just kind of talking while I was walking around because I didn't have a tripod to do this. But anyhow, uh, I am i don't know why somebody unsubscribed, but it's like I'm not trying to grow this like other people try to grow their channels to get money. I'm just doing this because it's part of my life. I do this Bible study as part of my life, just like I do the things about chickens, part of my life. I do the things about this property here, it's part of my life. And I basically, uh, I basically send out a, a link to these videos to people that I consider to be friends and family. And uh, there's only about 13 or 14. It's just somebody right now is kind of mad at me, so they told me they don't want the link. So anyhow, there you go. Um, 13 people right now is that I send out a link to. And I'm not trying to, to be a, an expert. I'm not trying to be your teacher. I'm just trying to share things that I uh, that I see in the Bible because I do this every day anyhow. I I I read the Bible and I I listen to to McGee and and every once in a while I got a thought in my head that I, I'm to uh, talk about. But anyhow, the thing is, I'm no expert. And if I, I'm thinking, why, why did I offend somebody? And I'm thinking, did I offend somebody? Because I mentioned that I, I used to be on drugs and I backslid for, who? I backslid even before I thought I was backsliding. So 30 plus years, I backslid. And every once in a while I came back and, and uh, I tried to teach uh, the Bible, and Bible studies in the park to the homeless people, 
and that was in connection with a, a ministry that was a theater ministry but but uh, and I did a lot of wrong things there um, things that are in this in this book that I should have known not to do mainly uh, mainly I I probably probably accused the people who were the uh, the leaders, the founders and leaders of that ministry, of being a little bit on the cultish side, and you know what? That was wrong of me, and uh, I shouldn't have done it. I should have handled it differently. I should have maybe just w walked away without trying to make any accusations. But the thing is, is that. I don't know why. Maybe maybe somebody got upset because I mentioned that the uh, I I was uh, I used to go to meetings and I couldn't stay clean. I and I think it was because I felt like that was a cult. Also, now I even said that at a meeting one time, and then my sponsor. You'd have to know what a sponsor is in those twelve step meetings to. To understand this, but he he mentioned to me that somebody he got around to him that somebody had said it was like a cult. And guess what? I just sat there and I didn't say anything to him about it. I just said, yeah, so uh, okay, you know. But the thing is, is that I I feel that sometimes fellowships get too involved in a person's personal life, and maybe they should be involved. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of like, like a loner, and and I'm sorry if I offended anybody, but uh, you know what? This is who I am, and I'm just trying to reach out and fellowship with somebody because I have nobody to fellowship with. Okay, so anyhow, this is about good behavior, or as it says in uh, verse 15 of this chapter, Paul says that he writes this to Timothy so he, should, he will know how to behave himself in church. Well, okay, maybe I haven't been on the best behavior, but... Uh, that's why I'm not trying to be a minister, because every one of these things, these are some, in this chapter is mainly about how to be a good minister, and everything in here, the, I have broken the rules of how to be a good minister. So look, a bishop, that means overseer, that would be the uh, top dog in the ministry, has to be blameless. He has to be the husband of one wife. Well, okay, I, both of those things are, I, I've broken. Vigilant, well, maybe I'm not so vigilant. Sober, well, that doesn't necessarily mean just drug and alcohol free, it's just, uh, Sober means uh, to think right. Be good behavior. Maybe I haven't been good. Maybe I'm not that hospitable. Maybe sometimes I slack off and in, in, I used to prepare for those Bible studies in the park. I used to prepare, um, but now I'm not preparing because I am not your teacher. I'm just somebody kind of sharing things. Not giving the wine. Well, even now, I think about it every once in a while, even though I don't do it for uh, 20 years. I haven't been high or drunk, but still, there's not a gay day goes by, especially in a hot weather, that I don't think about. It'd be nice to have a beer, but uh, no, because I don't want to go back to being high or drunk. Because, why? Because, no striker? What? Not greedy of filthy lucre. Well, no striker. I'm not very patient. 
a striker me getting in fights and that connected with that one underneath it not a brawler I, I used to get drunk and get in fights not covetousness I wanted I wanted something that you had I would I would try to take it one that ruleth well his own house I've never been a good parent never been a good parent let's go down here must have a good report of them that are without. No, a, a lot of people in the town I grew up in just think I'm a piece of piece of dirt. I'm a piece of dirt. I I didn't measure up to uh, as they've said it in the in. I used to get pulled into the uh, counselor's office in high school, and they'd tell me that I wasn't living up to my expectations. I uh, that I had a I had a good IQ, but I just one one working up to it. Well, no, because I'm lazy. Okay, qualification qualifications for deacons. Now, I back in the uh, the Christian house that was a Jesus People Commune in Vacaville, California, on Elizabeth Street. It's not there anymore, and now it's a big old building. They tore down the little house we were in, and put up a big old building many years ago. But the thing is, is that. One day the elder said for me to, to kneel down and at this meeting and he, he anointed me with oil and, and I, uh, or, ordained me to be his deacon. And anyhow, the deacons, they got to be grave. Now, I, I, I say stupid, goofy things all the time. Not double-tongued. Okay, I have lied. Not giving a much one. Well, you know what? We, me, and, me and this other elder, not the head elder, but the one under him, were taking drinks of wine before we went to sleep. <laughs> not greedy, filthy lucre. Who does it? We're all greedy. Pure conscience. How could I have a pure conscience of when I wasn't doing things right. Anyhow, talks about how their wives got to be, well, you know, I was never able to, when I did get married, I I really goofed that up. It's my fault. Because uh, as, uh, as uh, my son said, his mother used to talk to him about me and say that I wasn't ambitious, that I was a nobody going nowhere. And yeah, Okay, she was right. She was right. Anyhow, but uh, this this whole book was written by Paul to this young preacher named Timothy that that he used to carry around with him. That they traveled together, and but then he appointed him to be in charge of some church, and he wrote to him, saying this whole whole uh, letter that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God well if you want to know how to behave yourself in the house of God you got to read this whole this whole uh, epistle the first epistle of Paul to Timothy anyhow it's important that we read the Bible. It's important that we study the Bible. It's important that we meditate about on the Bible and think about about the Bible. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Now listen to this. This is the gospel. This is this is probably one of the earliest creeds of the church. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God looked down. He knew anyhow because he started the whole shebang. But he said, there's nobody down there that can save themselves. So, I'm going to go down in the flesh and I'm going to do everything right. I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to, I'll be in the flesh, but I'm not going to 
commit any fleshly sin in, in the sight of the angels. And he preached, and he has preached now unto the Gentiles. And even then, he allowed Gentiles to, uh, to be, he hinted that they were going to be saved. Once he was complete, he completed this good news, this gospel, that the Gentiles also will be saved. And the Jews, that he he was a Jew, and they didn't think the Gentiles were going to be saved. He thought they thought that God only wanted Jews to be saved, but that Jesus is for all people, for all people. And so, we who are in this world need to believe on him, and. And he is up there. He was received up in the glory. He ascended into heaven after he rose from the dead. But the thing is, is that he is up in heaven right now in that fleshly body, except that fleshly body was glorified. And someday we can be with him up there if we believe if we repent and we are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And that's a whole other thing I don't want to go into right now. But uh, it's all about God loved us so much that he came down in the flesh to save us when we couldn't save ourselves. 